So my topic is um, my journey with WordPress and, uh, and the opportunities it gave me. I'll be sharing my story, how I started with WordPress, and then how I went on to starting my own personal blog, and how I was able to benefit from my own blog. I'm a front-end developer, blog at labyfrancis.com, and also a social media manager for the PR boy. The PR boy is a, the PR firm for fashion brands in Abuja and Lagos. And yes, if you're able to see the last one, <laughs> you're privileged. <laughs> Okay, my social media handles at Larry Francis, Twitter, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, and Facebook. All right, like I said, what we'll cover, my personal story to WordPress, and um, why you need a personal website, and I'll summarize my points, and then you'll be able to ask questions. So, in the beginning, I, I started with WordPress in um, 2013. Now it's in my 200 level. I graduated from the University of Portacot. I studied gas engineering. People always ask me, what's the relation between gas, not even electrical, and technology? But I discovered that it's about passion and what you enjoy doing. So I, I learned WordPress, um, started learning WordPress 2013. I learned on my own. But initially, I paid someone to teach me. So this guy, I paid him 5,000 Naira. He said he was going to teach me WordPress. And he just told me, put, put your team and just write some text. He didn't even show me anything at all. But I was curious enough. I was willing to learn. I went on to study on my own. I downloaded a lot of materials. And I started building websites with a local host for those who are um, Tech savvy. I don't know. Local host, does anyone? I just want to know my audience so that I know how to break down things. Okay, using the local host, meaning I was able to do it on my own laptop, not taking it online. So I practiced on my own laptop. That's how I was able to learn. I downloaded materials from, from Google. I searched using the PDF query. When I mean PDF query, then I said WordPress tutorial, then I put file tag PDF. It helps me to get material. So if you're searching for something, maybe a document on how to learn anything, I think that's the best way to search. You put, after you type the document, you say file type, and then put um, a column, then PDF. It brings out those materials for you. So that's how I got those materials and I learned. Yeah. And it was awesome. I enjoyed every bit of it. I was able to do a website on my laptop, and I saw how awesome everything was. Then, my first freelance job, someone called me and said, OK, I know you can build a website. I need you to do a website for, he was into um, processing visas and admissions for schools. So I told him, OK, I could do that website. Remember, I've not yet hosted any website at all. When I mean host, I mean for a site to be live, for everyone to be able to access it. All I did to, throughout my learning process was to use my laptop and then practice. So I took a leap and I told him, yes, I could, I could do it. And then he gave me the job. I did it. I think he paid me, it was big, 70,000 Naira. <laughs> I collected that money, I was, I was shocked. I was like, is this how I can make money with WordPress? Just the knowledge I have. And I finished the website for him, I showed him, and he was happy with it yet. So, becoming good with WordPress, I discovered that yes, I could do his own website, but I needed to learn more. So I went to download more videos, learn about plugins, learn about um, components that could use to make a website better, editing CSS. So for those that are not tech savvy, CSS means cascading style sheets. Um, it helps to control the presentation of your website, meaning your color, your font styles, your, um, or as your line height the spacing on your website. So remember, once you make um, an installation of WordPress, if you don't know how to control those colors, you'll be limited somehow. So CSS helps you to do that. 
So I, I, I learned CSS. I could change it. If I don't like a thing on a, on, a, on a website, I could change it and, and make it better. So that was how I started getting better with WordPress. People started knowing that, yes, I could do better. I could um, make WordPress sites better. So you get the whole story at, at the end. Then a major opportunity came. For me, I think this was really transforming for, for my life. Um, the Commonwealth Games Federation, that Commonwealth Games Federation in the UK, they were looking for a, a web developer, or let me say, a website manager. So they contacted our school and University of Port Harcourt, and our school made an advert that they were looking for um, a website manager. So someone called me, that someone had helped before, talk about website, do consultancy, and all. He called me and said, I should apply. That there's, an, there's a vacancy for me to, to get um, a job with the Commonwealth Games Federation, and the opportunity was to work in Lagos. So I applied. They called for an interview. I was the only engineering student there. Others were computer science students. So normally you expect that uh, I wouldn't get the job because I'm not a computer science student. So we did the interview. I was the first to go in. I did, I, they gave us um, something to do live. And I did it. I did it. I think I did it under five minutes. Then they now asked me for other works I've done. I showed them that, okay, I've, then there was a site I did for one guy, you worry, uh, an online store. I used WooCommerce. WooCommerce it is a plugin um, for WordPress that turns your WordPress site into an online shop. So I showed them that, yes, I've done this worry shop. You should go and, go and check. So they searched and they saw it and they were like, okay, okay, that's, that's good. And then after two days or so, they, I got a call. That, oh, you have been selected. Um, you have a workshop in South Africa the next month. Huh? I said, wow, is this how WordPress is taking me <laughs> places? So, yeah, so I went for, for, for the workshop. I came back to Lagos. I started my work. I started managing their website. If you know about Nigeria Olympic Committee, you no know, Nigeria Olympic Committee, they are in charge of um, sports for Olympics, Commonwealth Games. So I was the one managing the website. I had access to everything. I met a lot of people. I met the Minister of Sports. All the big, big sports people you could think of. I met um, Choma Ajumwa, we took a picture. I was just everywhere. They were like, ah, that tech guy, that tech guy, that tech guy. And I was not really techy per se to my own um, estimate. Because for me, for it to be really tech, I should know front end development, know back end, know all the programming languages, PHP, JavaScript, you know, all those kind of things. But I just knew WordPress then and a little bit of tweaking on it. So that was it. And then I did my work well, did, the web, did another website for them, and I was moving. So yeah. <laughs> Traveling to South Africa, after South Africa, I went for another workshop. I went to Kenya, I went to Botswana, I went to, to Togo. <laughs> so it was really awesome to think that WordPress made all these things possible. At the end, you, I will join everything together for you to understand how you could really benefit from your knowledge of WordPress. So, yeah, that was me. That's, that's how I felt at that moment. <laughs> and all this happened under on one year, you know, and it was really, it was really awesome. So yeah, the first picture on your right, I think that would be for me to be on my left, that was me in South Africa, and then the second was in Rwanda, at the Kigali Genocide Memorial Center. I paid a visit to there, to that place to see the people they killed, and all that during the genocide. Then the last one with the white man, it's with the um, what they call it, development manager for the Commonwealth Games Federation. So we're discussing that when Bostwana having a workshop, we're discussing that he said 
they were bringing in the software to, to Nigeria. Not, not to Nigeria, but I said that. He was asking how could they make a software they use for sports management come um, to Nigeria. Why he asked me that question was because I told him that I, 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 I used WordPress to build um, our website in the office here in Nigeria, meaning their own country office. So he said, ah, that, do you know about WordPress? I said, yes, I know about WordPress. And I said, wow, that the support document for the, um, for the software is built on WordPress. I said, oh, that's we now showed me the site where the support document is. I checked it, it was on WordPress. But he now got interested in me, and he was like, how do we um, bring in this software to, to Nigeria? And I told him, it's simple, just do a training. For, for people to use it. And then he said, okay. And in the entire Africa, all the offices in Africa, no, nobody was using the software. So he now said that, okay, they're going to join, I think about 17 or 16 countries to do the, the training. So Nigeria, because of me, Nigeria will host it. So I started planning how we could host the, soft, um, host the training. And then, yes, because I knew WordPress, we did the training. There's about 17 African countries there South Africa, Rwanda, Kenya, Lesotho, all of them came. So, you see the process, how my journey was going. If I didn't know WordPress, he wouldn't have been interested in me. If he wasn't interested in me, we couldn't have trained the entire, almost the entire Africa on this um, software. So, yeah, and then I started, I, I started leading a mentorship program for a community, for the fellowship community as an alumni. While I was in school, I was in the fellowship, and then I graduated, I became an alumni. They said I should lead a program, mentoring program, whereby those have graduated years ago and are now professionals. They could mentor the younger generation. So I, I was wondering, I, I just graduated two years ago. There are others that could lead this program and um, do it better. But why are they really selecting me? So the, the idea was I needed someone that was really techy and would help run everything online. We do the program online. Everyone works remotely. We have mentors in the UK, mentors in the US, mentors and here in Nigeria. The mentors communicate with their mentees by either WhatsApp call, video call, and all. So I did a website for, for the program. We share success stories there to inspire the younger generation. We do interviews for people that are really successful in their, in their careers. And it was really impactful. A lot of people were amazed and they were really inspired, especially the younger generation. And last week or so, they gave me an award for, for excellent leadership for providing leadership and helping out to impact the, the younger generation. So now to what, if you've not really gained anything from my story, let me start with this. So starting my personal blog, I discovered that I had a lot of stories to share. I had content. Maybe I love sharing my own personal experiences. I feel like we can just swim so that I know that I'm not alone. All right, yeah, so maybe like sharing your stories on Facebook, like sharing your maybe Twitter and all. So I started my own personal blog, libraryfrancis.com, where I share my own stories. Just anything that interests me. So what I did, all the travels I did to South Africa, to Kenya and all, I put up the stories there, you know? I'll tell you why. Why? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll answer your question. So, before I tell you why, 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 why do you think you need a, a personal website from your own um, understanding? Let me know. Just one person because of share my personal stories. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Is someone raising up inside me? All right. So, your skills and your personal achievements, and so what you can offer the world. Perfect, perfect. So how many of us here have a personal website? You have your own personal website, bearing your own name. So I feel my own name. Hmm? Part of my own name. Part of your own name. Mm -hmm. Who else? Okay. 
Does three. Doesn't be a name. But is it your own personal? I don't mean a business kind of. Yes. I mean like your own personal story. Yes. So the main aim of this talk is for us to have our own personal. WordPress has made everything easy. If you cannot do the local installation, I think there are other workshops for that. You could use WordPress.com, create an account. If you want the free platform, those are the be and add. So if your name is Francis, if you want to use Francis.com, it will be Francis.wordpress.com. You don't have to pay. But if you pay, you get Francis.com. So the first thing, why you need a personal website? Connecting with people and, and building a network. So I told you that I shared my own personal stories. So what I observed was when I went to Rwanda, I enjoyed the country and all. It was so awesome, perfect. In fact, when you're, when you're checking out from their airport, they bring dogs to come and search your bag. So you just drop your bag, and then dogs will come and be sniffing it for, for, for her. So all these um, experiences were amazing for me. So I shared them on, the, on, on my website, and people get to read. And then I get people saying, oh, wow, you're in Rwanda. Oh, I, I'm going there um, ne next month. What do I need? How? And as I started making friends with people, people that I haven't met before. On LinkedIn, I shared um, my experience with the Kigali Genocide Memorial Center, how people were killed and trying to advocate for people not to fight and go into war. And the responses I got, it was really fulfilling. And people were sending me um, requests. Um, I want to be your friend. I want to be with you. I want to work with you, you know, and all that. Then, when I came to Lagos initially, everyone knows that Lagos has traffic. Yeah, and the traffic was really bad. So I shared that experience. And then house rent. Ah, oh my god. After paying your initial rent, they will not pay you agent fee, caution fee, um, um, <laughs> agreement <laughs> fee. Which other fee again? <laughs> I was like, I'm just coming from Port Harcourt. If they say pay house rent, you transfer. There's not, the highest you can do is buy a drink for the landlord. So when they begin to tell me all these things, I was like, this guy, you, are, you want to dupe me? Just So it happened like five. I've never known about this. And I was like, wow. But I said, this is a good story to, to document, you know, and then couple with the traffic and all. So at first, I shared it on my Facebook page. The response that people like, wow, is this what happens in Lagos and all that? And I shared it on my website. I got more friends. And remember, when you have more friends, when you have similar minds, you're, you're growing your network, right? And then if, if you need something to do, it's easier for you to do it with them because they already know that who, who this person is. You know? so if, for example, if, if they should search your name on Google now, what, what would they really see? That's the question you should, ask, you should ask yourself. So it helped me to connect with people and also to <coughs> to build my network. Now I have a network of people. People are expecting me that, please come back to Rwanda, please come back to this country, please come. Just because of that experience I shared. So yeah, building a personal brand. Remember I talked about um, if you're being searched on Google, what would they find about you? So building your own personal brand. Having a personal brand is is the future of opportunities. Do you know why? These days, it's difficult for you to trust anyone. And if they're trying to do a business with you, most people will search about you online to see what you're really, to see the kind of person you are and to know who truly this person is. So if someone wants to search about me, I'm sure they're going to say, ah, this guy loves traveling, this guy loves jello fries, this guy is a cool guy, and and all. So having your own personal brand, there's this guy, I think it's Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk that said, okay. Okay. all right, they said, you, you can tweet now, tweet using um, WC Lagos as the, as the hashtag. 
maybe some awesome stuff I've said. Just keep tweeting. My handle is the Adelaide Francis. Also tag um watch cam. Lagos. All right. So building a personal brand. Most time, there's this quote that said, um, "Your personal brand is what people say about you when you're not there." And when you're not there, it means that someone is searching about you, someone is trying to know about you. You're not there to prove a point. It's not as if you're making a pitch to that person and trying to make a proposal. They will go online and check about you. I'm telling you that that's the future of working with people now. People will go and check about you, know who this person is. If you have a criminal record, they will see there. But if you, <laughs> if you have good content being put out, People will know that, okay, yeah, this, this is what interests this person, this is what this person is good at. This person can, this person has worked with the common world, this person has worked with this organization. And people have a problem with documenting. What if I didn't document my stories? What if I didn't share those things on my personal world? I wouldn't have the network, the networks I, I, I have now. There was this, after sharing my story on LinkedIn about um, traffic, Okay, this is what happened. One CEO of a company, he, he, he shared on LinkedIn that he cut down the time for workers um, leaving the office from five to around four because of traffic. So they come in by nine and they leave by four so that they're able to get home on time. So I, I, I told him on LinkedIn, I said, oh, that's, that's really awesome, you know. What he did is it, it's really great. And I told him that ah, the traffic in Lagos is really, it's really crazy. In fact, I shared my experience here on my website. So he read it, and I, on, on the post, I added some woman and all. And he was laughing. He was like, ah, he hasn't laughed this way the long and like, oh, that this, this is really awesome. Because I was trying to say some Lagos workers should work from home. You know, the internet has made everything easy. And then he sent me a friend, uh, LinkedIn request, and I was like, okay, let's, let's be friends. We need to work on, on something, I know. Let me keep the rest. So, building a personal brand, having your own personal website helps you to build a personal brand. Then adding value and, and influencing the society. There, there was this um, tweet, a very big magazine said, about um, Rwanda, you know, trying to create the impression that the country wasn't a good country and all. So I, I, I replied with my own experience. I was like, see, this country have been there. They have um, free Wi-Fi on their buses. In fact, I thought it was a joke until I entered. When I entered the bus, I saw like 10, about 15 different ones to choose from. And it was it was awesome. The, you don't horn. You don't just horn. You know when they take me to the hotel room, and the driver was honing. I said, ah, horn this thing and let them come out. <laughs> <laughs> you know that kind of Nigerian spirit. The same Nigeria we used to, we used to horn for traffic light to change to. <laughs> you know, so I was like, ah, horn now, let this thing open. And it was like, no. They don't, they don't hunt like this. Ah. I just felt, I just respected myself, and I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll document, I'll document this, you know. Also, the um, airport, the airport experience, the helmet. You dare not move on bike without your helmet on, you know. And Rwanda is also the second, um, uh, second easiest place to do business in Africa. Yeah, higher than Nigeria. Well, we'll get better. So after I shared this experience, so I, that was the highest time I got, the highest views I got on my website. So you see, with that, I was able to change people's perception about, um, about Africa, especially the Western world, because they didn't see that country as, as anything. Rwanda has its own airline. They have about 11 planes on it, 11. And on those planes, they have internet on your Rwanda Air. So I told them that, yeah, they have this thing. See me, I'm busy advocating for Rwanda. I'm not advocating for my Rwanda. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so adding value to be, and some other stories too I shared in Kenya and then um, in Botswana, how awesome. And then my own country too, Nigeria. 
but I'm, I'll get more content for, for, for Nigeria. You know? <laughs> so yeah, you'll be able to. I remember when you're sharing these things, your network is building, right? You're getting to know more people, and the more people you know, the more <coughs> the more value you'll be able to get for for, you, for yourself. Good speaker speaker engagement. So let me assume you're good with um what you like with now search engine optimization. You're a consultant, right? Or what you love doing? Okay, let me use my own place of work, um, the fashion industry now. I manage um, social media handles and develop social media strategies for, for brands, very big brands. You know? So, <coughs> imagine you're good with um, your fashion stuff, you know how to see it means for, for the business today is International Women's Day. You're good with that. And then you post your picture, you try to explain your, your different um, fashion aesthetics on your website and all that. You know, you try to talk about the fashion industry, what you're really passionate about, or you're good with the web development, or you're good with leadership, or you're good with advocacy. And all your stories, you try to channel them into all this, right? And then there's a call for application to, to be a speaker at an event. And then they send you an application. You know that your resume will, will, will be your website. Because that's the only thing you can prove to them that, yes, I'm, I'm good at all this. And then once you begin to get those, those engagements, <coughs> you be, they begin to call you for other ones. And people get to search you and see what, what you do. I also guess why they accepted my, my, my talk here because of my, my personal website. So getting, getting jobs and, and contracts, let me, let me wrap up with this. While at my present job now, when I went for the interview, I was seated and then he told me that, the, guy, the person told me that, oh, I'm checking, your, I check, I'm checking your website now. And I was like, oh, wow. And then that was how I got the job, because it gave me an edge. You know? uh, Matt Mullenberg shared a story of a guy that got a job because People were applying, sending his CV. He just tweeted his website to the celebrity that this is what I do. This is. instantly they gave him that. You read the story on Matt Mullenberg's website. M A M A dot T T. That's the name. That's that's his website. Yeah. So in summary, do excellent work. When I mean do ex excellent work, is that share valuable content, right? Create online content. Build good relationships. In building good relationships, it's tied to doing excellent work. If people don't know you for something good, right, they won't recommend you for, for other jobs. If I wasn't good with that guy that told me of a job advert, I wouldn't have traveled to those, to those countries. If I wasn't good with my first job, like keeping to time, keeping to deadlines, I wouldn't have been where I am today. Then, right, have a, have a personal website to help in your personal branding, it will help you in building networks, it will help you um, in able, being able to, to influence society and add value to the country. And yeah, contribute to open source. I think we'll talk about that more. So finally, as long as you are creating online content, you're creating future opportunity. That's what Gary Wenerchuk said. So yeah, I'll say thank you very much. <laughs>